Guess what we're doing today? Hi everyone, I'm Mike from the Media Man Studio Review. And if you've been following our channel, you know we like to bridge that gap between the creative content and the technical requirements. We like to give our viewers information so they can make informed decisions when it comes to purchasing equipment for the creative industry. In today's video, we are going to look at water cooling my new Ryzen 9 3900X. It's a 12 core, 24 thread CPU and this really nice looking Lian Li 011 or 011 dynamic case. So this is a really nice looking case with a tempered glass front and side. And I thought it'd be nice to put a water cool system in there so that you know we could show it off a little bit more. It was by chance that I purchased most of the equipment, about 90% of the equipment that's gonna go into this build is from Bitsky. So I've been buying this over the last few months, just pieces at a time to build the system. And then when I finally got it all on the table, I actually noticed that almost everything is from Bitsky. They're not sponsoring this video. They're not giving me any funds for making this. I just happen to like this product. It's a product out of China. It's a, a lower cost product, but I think it's going to be just as good as any of the mainstream stuff to help keep our CPU cool for you know, the workload that we're gonna put this machine under. So let's just look at some of the equipment that we have here. These are just some guides or some jigs that we're gonna to use to bend some of the PETG uh, tubing that we have here. And we have one uh, kind of a larger radius 90, we have a 180, and we have a 45. Now I'm going to do a whole video on how we can actually bend this tubing to get it exact, like to the millimeter, so that our tubes are nice and straight and the bends are perfect in a machine. So uh, we'll do that in part two of this series of videos. Uh, we have the internal cable that helps us bend so that the tubing doesn't collapse when we're bending it. Uh, we have a tool that is just used to clean the inside radius and the outside radius of the tubing once you've cut it. And we have the cutter. And again, interesting, only by chance that everything came from Bitsky. So we have our PETG tubing right here. I like to buy the longer lengths, the one meter lengths. Um, and this is something you should definitely buy extra of. And we'll discuss that when we get to the hard tubing portion of the water cooling build uh, water bottle. So we can fill our pump and let's get on to the good stuff. So this was the last item that I bought, which is actually the tank. And this is a 220 millimeter tall reservoir pump combo. And it's RGB and as well as it's got an LED readout light on the front. And this is just going to be, I think, pretty gorgeous sitting in the front of that machine. So we will be mounting this one today. We have the water block itself, again from Bitsky. Uh, and this one is designed for the Ryzen chips, but we will be doing a slight modification. So this actually hits the MVME drive and the little uh, cooler, the cooler that's on top of that. So we'll just shave off a little bit of this edge and we'll do that later, probably in part two of the video. And that's the pump box. We also have the radiator. This is a 360, 30 millimeter radiator. So uh, all black. Um, because I couldn't find a white one at the time. But uh, we're gonna mount this and then put some white fans on the outside, so I don't think anybody's gonna see this. It's gonna be buried in the back side of that case, which we'll be mounting that today. As well as we have all sorts of Bitsky fittings. So I do have two sets. I have a set in silver and a set in black because I haven't really made up my mind yet which one I'm gonna use. So I got a full set of each because again, these parts come out of China and they're pretty inexpensive. So these are running probably less than 10 US dollars for each fitting. Um, let's see, less than that. These are about seven US dollars to buy for the straight through fitting. So there is the black one and there is the silver one right there. So. So there's a good look at the fittings. This is more of a gunmetal gray or a silver, and this is kind of a, almost a matte black. So once we get uh, most of the parts into this system, then I'll kind of make my final decision on black or let's just say gray fittings. I think the gray ones are gonna win. They just look nice. They're shiny, but not too shiny. So I think under the uh, RGB lights are gonna look great. 
Uh, one of the last items that we're looking at today is the ID cooling fans. Uh, again, a company out of China. Uh, not the greatest fans. They push enough air. They're just kind of loud when they get up around 2,000 RPMs. So I might be replacing these, but this case itself, you can actually put in it three in the bottom, three in the top, three in the side, as well as one in the back, a smaller one in the back. So I think I'll keep these as case fans. And the last item that we have here is this cryo fuel from EK. And I've got some navy blue. And actually, I bought two, three, because you want to make sure that you're not going to run out of fluid, you have enough to fill the entire system, and also for maintenance in the future. So if it takes, you know, one, one and a half liters, I at least got a liter and a half that I have for future once I clean the machine out, maybe once every 12 months or 18 months. So I think the next step is let's start looking in the machine itself. Oh, and the last item, and again, interesting, it turned out to be a Bitsky heat gun. So this is what we use to heat up the the tubing while we're bending it. And I will not be bending mine by hand like a lot of people do. They just hold it up and bend it. We are going to make really straight tubes so that they're perfectly aligned with the system itself. I don't want anything to be looking crooked. I'll show you a reference of a, Jay's Two Cents just looked at a new system on his channel and a really, really beautiful system. And one of his only critiques was, was what the tubing itself was not perfect. It was not parallel and not level in the system itself. So this is the case here. And for those that know this case, they might be wondering why I actually have the back on the side. So this is a good reason for everybody that's building their own machine or looking at parts for their machine to carefully choose wisely. I went out and I bought a really nice low-end air cooler for this, for this Ryzen, and it does actually, it, it keeps it really cool. I was really surprised at how well this performed. And that is an Arctic Freezer 34 eSports Duo. So no RGB or anything, but for a low-end fan. Again, I'm not being endorsed by Arctic at all, but this, this one impressed me. It is three millimeters longer than what I needed to put the glass case on. So it actually hits the glass case. So this is why I had the back on the front. If you're buying your own fan cooler, again, make sure that you know the measurements of it and that it's gonna physically fit in your case. So I do have some of these ID cooling fans in here. Uh, six, I have three in the bottom, three in the top, so that it's actually pulling air in and then pushing air out. And they're RGB and they are attractive. Again, a little loud but I will be showing you how you can set those up in your BIOS as well as some software utilities you can use, as well as one of the important factors of what is actually controlling the speed of these fans. You don't wanna control these from the CPU because as soon as that CPU goes up, even just a little 80, 100%, the fans are ramping up and down and it gets quite noisy. And in this case, I'm actually using them just to ventilate air through the case. So I don't need them to be running or have their RPMs controlled by the temperature of the CPU. So again, in this case, you can put a radiator in the bottom, you can put a radiator in the top, or you can put a radiator in the side. Now I can mount this internally in the case and have it inside. Um, but being black in a white case, uh, I don't think that that's very attractive. I think that I can mount this and just let me get this back out. I think that this would look much better if it was actually mounted on the back side of this case. And it actually fits in there almost perfect, like it was made for this case. So I'm just gonna spin that around so we can get a look at that from this side. So this is actually sitting in the back side or the back compartment of this case and we will mount the fans on this side in the front. And I think it's gonna look really nice. So you can also see here, get a good close-up view of that. So there's a better view. I just got a light so that we can actually see inside the case a little bit. And we can see that the fittings are fitting up top here and clearing the case. So just let me get that mounted in the case itself and then we'll come back and we'll do the fan mounts and then we'll take a look at mounting the pump itself into the case.
Okay, so you can see that I have fan number one, two, and three. Uh, one and three are fully installed. So now we're gonna mount the water block itself. Now, the water block is going to sit basically right here inside the case. And it's gonna hopefully, I think it's sitting almost dead center in that uh, glass that's sitting here. So it's using the same holes that the fan uses to mount. I think we'll just mount the water bracket itself first. So there's a couple things about this bracket itself. So let's see if I can get a good shot of that. The bracket is all black, so I think I'm gonna take this off and paint it white. And I might actually cut out the inside here so that you can see the center of the fan that'll be running through there. As you can see here, this just sits here on top of the fan. So cutting out the center part might look nice and having this painted white, I think would look good. But let's get it temporarily mounted on there and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so I have the fans and the water pump mounted, um, the RGB and the, the fans powered up. So let's just actually see how it's gonna look. So I think that that looks fantastic. So we have our reservoir that's sitting right in the center of that plate and it's all lit up when we get water in there or the, the EK fluid, it's gonna look fantastic. So in the next video, we're gonna mount the CPU cooling block on and we're gonna to start to do some of the hard tubing. Again, I'm gonna do a whole video on how you can make your hard tubing with perfect 90 degrees or perfectly parallel uh, and level surfaces in your computer and make it look really nice. I don't like the way the black looks here, so I'm probably gonna take that out. Uh, I'm gonna paint it white and see how it looks. But again, the tubing will run up to the CPU and then up into the radiator, which is up here. We'll do a couple 45 degree offsets here. So that's it for part one. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. We'll be doing a lot more projects, uh, not necessarily like this. This is a specialty project so I can water cool my own rig. But we will be looking at how water cooling something like this, maybe your own personal computer that you're using for the creative industry and how it's going to keep your CPU cool so that when you're doing long renders, um, you know, 24 hour renders, is it good enough to keep your CPU at a cool temperature so that there's no thermal throttling? I really appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.